Hey y'all, I'm back. Uh, I haven't made a video in a while because I've been busy going on a trip and then moving to Montreal and now starting my PhD and it's all been really busy and overwhelming. But now that I'm starting to settle in a bit, I wanna start making videos more. Um, so in that vein, this is another video in a series with Everyday Feminism, which is a website dedicated to helping you break down and stand up to everyday oppression. And in this video, I want to discuss the ways that people use the same term feminism to refer to two actually different movements and scopes. So one way that the term feminism is used is to describe a woman-focused movement, focusing on sexism and sexist oppression against women. It's a historical movement and it's the way that the term is most easily understood, I would say. However, there's also another way feminism is used and that's to refer to a broader movement. So feminism might also refer to like what we do here at Everyday Feminism, the fight to end all kinds of oppression. So this may or may not be directly regarding women. Women will certainly gain freedom if oppressive systems are dismantled as women are still oppressed uh, in many ways due to their identity as women. However, feminism as a broader movement is interested in freeing all genders and agender people from all oppressions. So it's a movement which focuses on more than gender-based oppression against women. So let's talk a little bit about these two kinds of feminism. First, there's the woman-centered feminism, and that's the way that most people think of feminism at a surface level. So men's rights activists hear feminism and think femme. That means for women only. Feminism hates men. It's in the name. And feminism evokes this woman-focused movement, which fights for the liberation of women from patriarchal oppression. The movement has been going on for many decades and has focused on legal inequalities, women's suffrage, educational reform, cultural inequalities, gender norms, femininity, etc. It's a fight that is far from being over, but we have made historical strides within that movement. And there are valid reasons, I think, for wanting our feminism to be woman-focused. It began with the study and activism of women against our oppressors. Woman-focused feminism, I think, does have the ability to recognize that patriarchal systems constrain more than just women, but remain focused on creating spaces for women to be safe and working against societal pressures and constraints still placed on woman, women qua women. However, this kind of feminism is also hurtful and potentially harmful. It hurts gender minorities and trans women by focusing mainly on the oppression or only on the oppression and experiences of cis women. And this is exclusionary and it doesn't actually help to advance women as a whole as it leaves out some women who don't fit a certain mold. Um, it also excludes people who don't identify as women or men but who still experience gender-based oppression too. So some feminists identify with the notion of feminism as being for women's liberation, the women's lib movement. And while that's technically true of feminism, it doesn't actually capture all the ways that different kinds of oppression will affect women. And it does nothing to account for the ways those oppressions affect people who are not women. So that leads me to the second, I think more modern version of what feminism is. And that is feminism as a broader anti-oppression movement. So often people just call this intersectional feminism, and that's a term coined by an American professor named Kimberlé Crenshaw in the late 80s. So this concept has been a part of women of colors and especially black women's feminism all along, but it has made its way into the mainstream more recently, no doubt due to the tireless efforts of feminists of color. And this broader feminism is intersectional in the sense that it describes multiple critical theories of ways that different but related oppressions um, and oppressive institutions are interconnected and they can't properly be examined separately from each other. So these institutions include racism, sexism, homo antagonism, trans antagonism, ableism, classism, and more. Um, these are all related and to look at only sexism, the plight of women, without looking at other oppressions which intersect with sexism for many women, so racism will intersect with sexism for a woman of color or ableism will intersect with trans antagonism for a trans person with disabilities. Uh, there are millions of people who live at the crosshairs of different oppressive institutions and systems and it's modern feminism's goal <clears throat> to address all of these institutions so that we can all be free. Think of it like this. 
If you have an infection and you want to cure that infection, you could try certain techniques for cleaning it or trying to eat differently, uh, something like that. Um, but let's say you eventually realize that there's a larger condition that's causing that infection. And in fact, that condition is infecting other parts of your body too. So it's obviously in your best interest to treat the condition so that all your infections can heal rather than just focusing on one infection. Um, now treating your condition might be more complicated than you might think. It might be more than just taking a pill and they all go away. It might involve examining what is underlying all of these infections, how they're related or different from each other, and trying a combination of techniques to try to cure them all. So that's kind of a weird example, but it's meant to show that by focusing only on ending sexist oppression against women, we ignore many other oppressive systems, which will ultimately end up oppressing many of those same women, as well as many other people. So to best treat, that is get rid of sexism, we have to look at racism, ableism, etc. We need to examine oppression more widely and cure the entire concept from our society. <sighs> so. It can be confusing when some people use the term feminism to refer to women-focused feminism and others are using it to refer to intersectional anti-oppression feminism. And this tension can make it hard to know exactly who is being addressed. Uh, so for instance, non-binary people are oppressed because of their gender, so they ought to find a place in feminism. But the name of feminism doesn't necessarily suggest that their gender oppression is part of the problem being addressed but it is part of the problem. So we need to make that clear. And I don't think that we need to change the name of feminism to do that. Feminism is ultimately a collection of movements that recognize oppression of all sorts affecting a wide range of people. So it's okay that feminism evokes a long history of fighting against women's oppression. It's also okay then that plenty of folks choose not to use feminism for good reasons, like womanists, often due to their historical exclusion from that mainstream feminist movement I talked about at the beginning. So the meaning of terms can change over time while still holding on to their history. And that's what's so important about maintaining feminism as our term while remembering that we have the power to use it for more than just our own equality. So I hope that that explains and helps pull apart those two usages of the same term. And I will see you in my next video. Thanks, y'all.